How could he talk about anything in the storytelling story realm? My name is David Lloyd. I'm from California, okay? And I teach at Reseca, which is the Red Sea Institute, okay, of cinematic arts, okay? And I like that you're taking notes. That is great. When I go to classes, I take notes. If I go to a lecture, and even when I'm watching movies sometimes, I'll take them because there's no way to remember everything. So, uh, and at Reseca, I teach editing, which is a we call host production. There's basically three phases to production, whether it's for TV or the cinema. Cinema, films, movie, all the same. First is writing. Okay, that's done basically by one, two, maybe three people. I'll explain that more. Then there's the physical production, and this is where you see the camera crews and the actors and the lights and the microphone on the big pole. Okay, that's the physical production where they're doing all these shots. They're doing all these angles. And then post-production, editing, is where that material comes into the computer Okay, it's now it's digitized, and then it's manipulated through editing programs like Avid or Final Cut or Final Cut Pro. I want to back up and say, if you have any questions about a term or a word or anything I say, boom. Okay? Because I don't know what you know. And I may use a word and you go, that's great. No idea. Okay? Because it's a word. I love a word. The sound is fantastic. But I don't know. <coughs> so you kind of clear a little bit on what post production means. Okay? This is for movies or TV, whether you shoot inside or outside. It's these three stages of that technical process. The writing is usually starts with one person. The reason I mentioned three people be before is in the Hollywood system, you may a script may be written and then purchased, which is good for that writer because they just sold the script. And it's a good thing. Then that, that script with the producer may be given to another writer to change things. Okay. And then another writer, and maybe another writer. This is called the development process. It uh, can be great, it can be horrible. Okay. But that's kind of what happens. In the European uh, model, this does not happen. The screenwriter writes the script, often then collaborates with a director, and they run off and they make the movie together. Okay. It's much more personal and it's much more artistic. In the independent cinema, okay, these are lower budget films, then you get this process where the screenwriter writes, the director directs, and the editor edits. So I just want to talk about writing for a little bit. So for screenwriting, which is a particular form, it's not like any other kind of writing. It's not like uh, what we would call prose. P-R-O-S-E. Prose means normal writing. If you picked up a, a newspaper, that is prose. Okay? It's a very particular form. And the thing that's unique about screenwriting is you're not, oh, my head's been chopped off for 20 minutes. Body's been talking. So, what's unique about screenwriting is you're writing, but it doesn't go to the consumer. It doesn't go to the reader. If I write a book or an article or my blog or anything in new media, it goes right to the consumer. It's one, 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 right? Not for the movie. This script that's created gets translated. Through the director's sensibilities and everyone else who works on the movie. 
So it's a very, very different form. And sometimes the screenwriter is very happy, and sometimes they're traumatized by what's happened to the reader. Because what's on the page can be changed and interpreted very, very wisely. Okay? So it's a very different form. So when you're screenwriting, you have to write something that's very readable. Okay, that means it, 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 uh, you kind of zoom through it. Okay, we've all read an article that's slow and plodding, and we're like, "What's this about?" And then we've read things that they just like that. Okay, that you move very quickly through. A screenplay needs that kind of quality of writing. It's a very abbreviated form. Okay. In the screenplay, there are basically, I'll say basically three elements. They are scene headings, where are we? Interior, exterior, day, night, and what's the location? Okay? If you get a hold of the screenplay, you can do that on the internet. Okay? That's the first element. The next one is some sort of description. What is this place like? So if I, I say city mall, I have to say it's modern, it's shiny, there's many, many people here bustling about shopping. Because I need to give uh, the reader of the screenplay a feeling of the scene. Okay? The next one is a character's name. Okay? The next one is their dialogue. And those are the basic elements of the screen. Okay? Questions about that? Yes, please. You said that the scene, the afternoon, then the day. The place? Yes, the location. But I want to say something about that. Google is your friend. Google is your ally. You can go to Google and in the search window put screenplay PDF or screenplays or type the name of the screen. And it will send you to a link. And if this screenplay is on the internet somewhere, you can load down some kind of text, word, or PDF document. Okay? On my computer I have many, many strings. This is the only way to find out what a script is supposed to look like. The margins are very different. Dialogue is in the center. The character's name is in the center. You would never do this in a story. So, if you're interested in screenplay writing, or writing for TV, download scripts and read them. The language is very different than any other form. Okay? And when you see it, if you see it, you'll notice that it's wow. And you, it's a uh, it's a form that is the accepted standard. Okay. I don't know of any other uh, media where this is the case. Screenplay is written in a certain format. Okay, and you pick it up and you look at it. You know, it's very distinct. Ma, do you have any other questions about? Yeah, you see, you talk about the difference between the script and the story. No, the script and the final film. The final film, right? So let me just, I wanna, I'll get back to you. What are, we'll just take a poll. What are you most interested, because I could talk about all kinds of things. What are you most interested in learning? In this editing, writing, and topic. And what, what kind of writing? Um, I'm, I'm writing my own. That's what I love about my work. I, I am an advocate like that for the discussion in social Good. About the student refugees uh, in social. Uh, Social way of political uh, war and disease. I know that uh, the way of life. Okay. And, uh, oh, the way of life. Okay, okay. Yeah, and uh, my, the, the thing I like to write is sarcastic. Very interesting. 
So what's your first name, please? It's a new one. It's a new one. He's just brought up something really important. What is the tone of writing? He said the word sarcastic. This is kind of uh, uh, it's it's humor and it's a little bit angry. Okay? And this is a wonderful way to write. This is different than you and then an article you might see in the newspaper, which is neutral. There's the facts. This happened, da 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 da. He wants to give a tone or a flavor to the story. Okay? Which will make it entertaining and also um, the, his opinion is inside the story. Okay? So if he says the uh, misguided leaders of da 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 da, you're getting a flavor of what he's saying. Okay? So sarcastic, that's great. So you want to write more articles or just actual short stories or what? I have my web and I stream of it and I have my So this is fiction. Fiction is fiction. Fiction. Yes. So what's the different your one? If there's fiction, what's the other thing? Reality or what we call nonfiction, which is a weird term, nonfiction. So fiction is something that's made up or created. Okay? Transformers, this movie. Fiction, right? We don't have giant robots running around today, coming to Earth and looking for stuff. Okay. Nonfiction is based on real people and real events. Uh, a biography is is nonfiction. This is a story about a person. Okay. If you wrote about King, this would be a nonfiction story. You're um, I don't know if it's a question, but I, I would like to know more about how to uh, phrase my sentences in order not to reveal the, the whole story from the beginning, but to keep some suspense, to make it, uh, like, to make others still want to see it. So this is a very sophisticated point, by the way. You're talking about, yeah, no, this is, no. No, 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 the screenplay does the same thing. Stories are always about giving out information. So you can do it in a dull way, or you can do it in this intriguing way where you, we, uh, where you just give a little at a time. There's enough there for the reader to be excited and interested and makes them want to know more. So part, a little part of that is grammar, and grammar is the order and usage of words. Okay. I go to the store, is grammar. If you say, I, I to the store go, that's not, even though the information is the same, the grammar is not correct. Okay? And American and English, if you're writing in English, and if you're writing in Arabic, it's going to be different, the way sentences are structured. Okay? So this is a very interesting thing, because you want to lead the reader into the story deeper and deeper, like going into a cave, and then there's something really cool at the end. It's got to be something exciting and interesting and different and unexpected at the end. Okay? Every story is a journey. Every story. Okay? Go. Okay. Okay. Writing, you that what I want the stories. So I just the I would have Yes. 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 Okay. 
Okay, that's perfect. That's wonderful. I have brought some today. That's good. Okay. Uh, I have short stories from all different places, and I have some short stories from Arabic students, too. Okay. So short stories to be published in perhaps a book or are published online. Right? Yeah? Okay. Uh, how to uh, deliver the, the, the script to, uh, the, to the lecture? Oh, this is a fabulous question. How do I tell the script through images? This is very important. Okay. This is something uh, that is emphasized in screenplay writing, where what, what's being shown that I can understand. Okay. If, uh, so that's very important, in the pictures, and who's inside the pictures. So in a script, <laughs> in a poorly written script, someone will say, I'm upset. In a well-written script, they take the coffee cup and they go, <laughs> okay, boom, they're upset, right? That is in the picture. We call this behavior. What do people do? Okay, so I was lost getting cute. And I'm looking all like this. Am I a local man? No. And you would know that passing by me, whether you saw my clothes or not. I'm not Right? That's behavior. So if I want to show somebody lost, I do that. I don't write. He say, I'm so lost. Wow, how lost am I? I'm really lost. Right? That's dumb. <laughs> so in pictures, that's what he said. In pictures slash human behavior. Everybody anywhere in the world understands human behavior. And that's a universal. So we see what people do. And we also trust behavior. People can say this, but what they do, we trust. Okay? It's very telling. So that is that I have to make notes. Right? Can I borrow this? <laughs> no, I took it. You can go Oh, okay. You're how smart are you? Okay. So So we have short stories. We have, I'm just going to call this mystery. And this is stories. Okay. All right. So we got some great topics. Yes. Okay. I would like to concentrate in the uh, type of editing. Mm -hmm. For example, if I'm, if I'm editing a short story uh, for a book or for a website, or to be a, uh, a taking a video, transforming a video, or a movie. So do you mean editing words, or do you mean editing what we call media? When you say editing, do you mean the text, or do you mean the pictures and the sound? Yes, the picture and the sound. Picture and sound. Right. Picture and sound. Also part of obvious. Yes. Silence with written things. Silence. And written things. Silence with written things. Like when you when do we use silence and when do you? In a movie. And yeah, or when or when. Oh, do we put it in silence or do we put it in dialogue or description? Yeah, because sometimes it's, yeah, the fact that it's silence is better than. Oh, this is a good one. So silence is actually. I understand my questions are not related. I understand. Okay, no, 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 no. This is actually not related. It's an interesting topic we have. Yes, sir. 
ايش بدي احكي عن هذا من How to enrich in details. Yes, and this is for a this is for a film script. I know it's King Lee from his age. Yes, it's for a scenario script. Uh film script. Film script in hand. Wow. So also great question. Uh, details make things come alive. I'll give you a perfect example. Say a woman walks into a room. That is just a basic kind of thing. But if I say the nervous woman shuffled into the dark, antique, covered room, there's a picture in your head. No matter what story you write, creating, we say, painting images is very important. It just draws you in, it activates your imagination. So these details, the other side is too many details closing down. So you want to be selective. You're going to pick specific details that help drive the moment and the story forward. So the man pulled up the uh, the the young student pulled up to the curb in a battered green Honda. So we know he's not rich. Okay? It's very few words, but it paints a picture. Okay? <laughs> you don't have to have something, but if you see what you and must be the same as 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 the because that's, that's the biggest thing. And it's the hardest thing. Yes? She didn't was like, my ideas. I have this. How do you develop? How do you train my story? This idea. So this is it. So he has an idea about a character or a situation. It's some kind of plot, right? About story. Yeah. How do I turn it in? This is a big topic. Well, I have a vision for our study, but I did not write any nice Okay. Right, but I have a vision. We need five hours, just so you know. So, we touch you first. Okay. It is a good sound thing. Editing, editing the sound in films? Now, do you mean dialogue and sound effects? Mm -hmm. 
Right voice, okay. Is this uh, in a film with a dialogue? This dialogue just means words. With a dialogue. Oh, okay, so this is interesting. So this is dialogue. Dialogue. Yes. <laughs> how to write the shortest and the strongest description about the, some action. Wow, you guys are great. Okay, we're going to start with this one first because all of this kind of is about writing. Okay. All right. So. This is editing. Here's the first thing I want to tell you. Watch. What's your favorite? Do what movies do you like? Do you have any titles that you like? Gladiator. Gladiator. Yes. Oh, good. The uh, Three hundred. Three hundred. So you like uh, men with their legs showing movies? <laughs> Better than like showing examples. This is a good movie. Oh, good. you do. Okay, these are these are all action. Movies. Okay, we'll talk about German. So I want you to watch this movie. Yes. Um, they're talking about a movie called Three Hundred. Okay, and that's it. It's three zero zero. And the other one they're talking about is um, Gladiator. Gladiator across the board. Yeah. If we have many characters in our script, how can we manage uh, to uh, to highlight the main characters? Okay. I'll come back. Okay. So. Um, absolutely serious. You're going to watch this film many times, and here's what you're going to look for. When someone's speaking, how much of their dialogue is on camera, how much is off? Okay? Having dialogue on camera has a certain effect, and having it, having it off camera is a certain effect. Okay? The most boring film is you cut to me and I say all my words, and they cut to you and you say all your words, and da da da. This is not expressive or interesting editing. Okay? If I will give an example, so there's a prisoner in the courtroom. Okay? And the judge says in the American system, he says to the judge, says to the jury, have you reached a verdict? This is a, a man who's being charged with the crime. Yes, Your Honor, we have. And they pass the verdict on a piece of paper to the judge. Now, I can stay on the judge reading the verdict, right? That's the information. But what we'll say, what's the story? And the, that means what's emotional and psychological that's going on that's interesting. So once that note gets passed, who can I cut to that's going to, this moment's going to have the most impact on? Who's the moment? In this moment, the verdict's being read, who is going to have the most, who's this most important to? Yeah, that's a judge. The judge is reading it. He's going to go home to his wife and have dinner. He's fine. Where would you cut? Yes, yes. So where would you cut? I cut after the... So 
So the judge has a verdict in his hand, and he's going to read it to the courtroom. But psychologically, where's the audience? What does the audience want to know? Uh, the man who didn't convict. Yeah, so when I make my edit, what should I edit? What should I cut to? To uh, the prisoner that he read it for the judge. Yes, because every word that the judge is about to say may affect his life forever. Okay? I don't have to cut to anybody else. I could cut to his lawyer, maybe a little bit. If his family's in the courtroom, I'll cut to the family. But the main thing is what's happening to him. So the judge has the piece of paper. He says, uh, for the first count of uh, grand larceny, uh, you are found not guilty. For the second count of murder with intent to do deadly harm, you are found not guilty. For the third and final count of possession of illegal drugs, you are found guilty and sentenced to five years in a federal, federal penitentiary. Do you see? It's his face. The information is coming from the judge, but that's not the emotional, psychological story. Remember, we're writing for an audience. Okay? Do you want to translate that? Because this, do you, here's what a story is, it, it is particularly, sometimes in a non-fiction story, but in a fiction story, it, you must remember this, it is an emotional, psychological experience. Okay. How many people saw Iron Man? Okay, boom, okay. This story is told in a particular way. It starts with Tony Stark uh, in the desert. Right? And then trucks are moving along, the, the army convoy, and boom, 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 and he's prison. Right? Then we go back in time and show what happened early, right? Where he was given an award and other scenes. And then we come back to the present. That is structuring the time in the most interesting way. Okay? Please. Yes, Thank you. 
that. Okay, this is perfect. So, I want you guys all to make this note. There's a short film. And the short film is called Incident. That's something that happens. Incident at Owl Creek. Creek means a little river. Okay? Incident at Owl Creek. And you're going to go to YouTube. You have to do it now. And you're going to find it. And here's what it is. What this story does, it uses time or how the audience is given information in an extremely creative, emotional, psychological way. Incident inside Janet at Owl Creek. Okay, you can find it on YouTube. It does that, and also it tells a story only in pictures. There may be a little bit of dialogue at the beginning, but it's not important dialogue. It's like hello, goodbye, da da da. Okay, so you can see this. Okay, and it, it's an amazing story. It's in black and white. Don't freak out if it doesn't have color. It's in black and white. Okay, and the way he uses time is extremely powerful. Okay, we've all seen movies that start at the end of something. Okay. A prisoner's being, I don't know why this prison thing, what's wrong with it? So this prisoner's being led to his execution, and he sits down, and then we flash back and we have this whole life. That's a much more interesting than starting when he was a baby. We don't know he's going to get in trouble. But if we start with him in trouble, more interesting story. Tony Stark and Iron Man in trouble. More interesting, more, you understand the difference? Right? Yeah. So if I start with a woman in a delivery room having a trouble delivering the baby, it's more interesting than just driving to the hospital. Yeah, we'll be fine. You know, it was much worse. Okay? Not interesting. If we start with labor, she's in labor, it's more, what we say, gripping. It grabs the audience. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now it doesn't matter if you're writing in English or Arabic or any language. Okay. So for you, study the films in Arabic or English, whatever you like, and watch how the dialogue falls. Okay. Sometimes there is an even exchange where people are on the, the uh, screen for the same amount of time. Okay. But it's probably going to move pretty fast. Okay. Uh, drama is going to be a little bit slower. Okay, you were talking about different types of editing. This is right here. Oh, yeah. So let me just touch on this briefly. Comedy, comedy tends to go quickly because comedy things can be fast. It's just more fun. Drama is going to be slower. Okay. And you can actually have more silence in drama. Okay? You can see people think. We can see people reacting. Okay. What we saw in our courtroom example that I gave today with the man waiting to hear the verdict, this is called a reaction shot. What is the man about to be sentenced? What is he thinking and feeling? How is he reacting, right? Mm -hmm. So a man proposes to a woman. I won't propose to you because that might say. So a man proposes to a woman and says, Darling, you're the love of my life. Will you marry me? Then we cut to her. Mm -hmm. let, what, let, what do we want her answer to be? Do you care? So she says, I will, yes, darling, I love you. So is it more dramatic? He says, darling, you're the love of my life. Will you marry me? The cut to her, she says, yes. Or if he says, darling, you're the love of my life. I want you to marry me. We cut to her. And she, we wait. And then we cut to him. 
Okay, and then we come back to her. She smiles. And then she says, Yes, I know. Is that better? Yeah. It's better. It's better for the moment, it's better for the audience. See that? Now, the information is the same. Will you marry me? Yes. How is it presented? Much more interesting. Right? That's storytelling. So it shows more the emotion from the action. When maybe if we took the head of the head, uh, like the Nervous? No, not nervous. Goosebumps. We call this goosebumps. What do you call it? What do you call this? Which is? Which is? Which is? Which is? Goose, we cut the bumps from nervousness, right? Yes. Yeah, so that's the idea. That's storytelling. Okay? Information is information. It's not necessarily interesting. Okay? But storytelling is what we just said. We just talked about. What will she say? We're, the relatives are looking. It's a much bigger, much more exciting moment. We all understand this. Okay? Okay. So you have to study films and see the different kind. Action films, action films that we mentioned, 300 is an action film, Transformers is an action film, Gladiator action film. Gladiator actually is an action slash drama because he's a noble, he's a noble soldier and his family gets murdered by the jealous son of the king. And then he gets sold into slavery. Okay, so that's the end of him. I'm going to be king. Right, he's all happy. Okay, oops. He's alive. He's going to come back to get his vengeance. Okay? Okay, that's a vengeance. So it's, it's an action drama. It has a human story that's very important. Uh, um, you know Transformers with the robot, right? Yes, yes. There's not a lot of human drama there. There's some funny things, but there's not a lot of human drama. It's basically working everything out of the robots between Shia LaBeouf and the robot, okay? But Gladiator, he has something personal at stake. You slaughtered my family. You horrible man, I'm going to kill you. Somehow, some way, someday, I will take my vengeance and I will kill you. That's a drama. Okay. Why that? Hmm? Why that? Drama and action. Yeah, Twilight is drama and action slash teenage. It's for teenagers. Okay? Story yes, 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 and romance, yes, but it's geared for a particular section of the of the of the population, right? From eighteen to forty-eight. Yes, yeah, women like it more, so it's much more for women, and it's much more for younger women, and she hates. It. So it's not for everybody. Huh? More fiction. Fiction, more fiction. Yes, very fiction because it's actually a, a kind of fantasy because there's vampire people, horror, Whoa. fantasy, and people turn into wolves. Okay? But we like these stories. They really excite a, kind of the childlike part of our brain. What if a person could turn into a wolf? That would be cool. What if a person did have superpowers? Okay? That's why we like Batman and Superman and Spider-Man. What if somebody could do that? It excites our imagination. Okay? Do we think that somebody could really swing off of buildings, buildings and spider webs? Don't think so. Okay? Can somebody really fly when it just <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay? But it excites our imagination. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Let's let's get something real. How are we doing? Okay, cool. I've run out of space already. You're going to tell me 
What's the story? What is it? Whether it's written or we see it at the movies, what's in the story that we all decide? Yes. Filling the details and the telling the details of an action. Details of action? So, okay, details of action. So these uh, are, are the specific things, the specific things that people do. Now, again, story time and cinema time is this compressed time. Can I have a two-hour movie about someone's entire life? Yes. Yes, because I do this to it. And I select moments. That's what stories do. That's selection. Is the birth important? No, it's not. I thought it was. It's not. I just want to see them when they're a teen. And they do something that tells them who they are. Okay, so that's what okay. So what else was like? Um, the so characters. So these are great things. Characters. Okay. So the people in the story are like um, they're our way into the events. Okay. Yes. In general, story should include a clear beginning and clear ending. You guys are geniuses. Yes, I guess we're making And uh, as a short story, each uh, of these added is a number of characters. So it's interesting, we're starting to define what a story is, and look how the topics are coming up. Scenario, which is uh, sort of an outline or an overview of the story. Okay? Uh, all, and this is beginning, middle, and end. We'll, we'll define what that is. Okay? Stories and details. That's what we talked about. That scene that I wrote, I loved so much of the work, and it became uninteresting. It wasn't a good beginning for my story. It wasn't a good beginning. That's great. Okay. Uh, beginning is reducible to basically one sentence. Gladiator. A heroic uh, soldier uh, is selected by the king to leave Rome, and his jealous son murders his family. And what's his name? Maximus. Maximus, Maximus pledges revenge. That's the whole plot. One or two sentences. Okay? Uh, do you know the film Jaws with the shark? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you? Mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg made a film about a shark from a book that was written. So it's reducible. A shark terrorizes a town, and the sheriff has to stop the shark. That's the whole movie. Okay? Now there's other characters and stuff. 
but that plot should be reducible. If your plot is nine sentences, something's too wrong. Something's wrong. Okay. Uh, so what else is in the story? Mm -hmm. So we have details of action, characters, con, place, plot, beginning, middle, and end. That's that's pretty good. Well, that's okay. Anybody have what else? Yeah. 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 So, well, this is this is an interesting analogy. If you want to use the building, we see many buildings built around a mine. What's the first thing that appears? They level the ground, right? And then what do we see? The base. This, the foundation, and then up comes the steel, right? The steel, and then right. So we have this is a structure, a form, right? And then they add the walls and everything else on top. Okay. For movies, structure is very important. And that means structure is what happens to who, when, okay. and what it means to them. Okay. So, um, Pavel said that the structure is usually a fiction stories. Yes. And and that um, the, the novel or the long stories in general, they are not really special short stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a story is just a form, yeah. and I can pour into it anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if I don't know that I can have something very realistic and beautiful in a short story, and I can have something fantastical in a long story. In America, the novels tend to be realistic and historical and all that. Uh, what else could go in? I could be uh, out of the writer's uh, imagination. Out of the writer's imagination. So, so this is important. So let's just do these things for uh, a role. Stories are about characters, okay? And they can be real or imaginary, or what they call, they call them the, uh, they call them the mountain. And that means it takes a little from this and a little of that. So it could be based on somebody real, but you don't mention their name. So I can be writing a character and think about a great Roman general, but I'm going to make him a drug dealer in 2013. Okay? I don't know if that makes sense. What's the name? It means to melt many things together. So I can put my uncle in there, and then some something else, and that is an amount. Okay. I saw I saw a movie called The Medicine Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Malice? Malice in Wonderland. Yes. It sounds very English. Yes, sir. Yeah. I love it. No, but I've heard this before. That is wonderful. Malice means evil intent. That's malice, evil intent, right? So that, that's very British there. So we have characters. Characters are the people that lead us to the story. If I change the characters, I change the story. Very powerful. So I'm writing, and I think it's about me. 
I want it to be just like me. La, 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 and then I go, it's not very interesting. So if I make it a student, then it becomes an interesting story. Okay? So be aware of that. The characters bring something to your story. Who is it about? Okay? If I write a story about an old man, it has certain things that come with it. Okay? Um, have you seen this? There's a movie. It's at uh, 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 It's called Winter Bone. Winter Bone. Have you seen it? What's important is it's a story about a 17-year-old girl, and she's trying to make her family work. That's much more interesting than a 29-year-old woman trying to make her family. Got that? Uh, okay, I want to know about that. So who the characters are are very important. Gender is very important. Okay? Their background is very important. Okay? What kind of family? Are they educated? Um, what do they like? What are their dreams? Okay? Not all these things may be revealed in this story, but it's the inner life that, that of the characters that uh, uh, it affects how they react to what the story is bringing to them. Okay? So here's something that's not here. We've got to have it. Are you ready? What's conflict? You know this word at all? Conflict. Yeah, right. So, when he was storing the gladiator, he's at war, the king says, you're going to be the next king. Well, I'd rather just go home and be with my family. No, Rome needs you. Okay? He goes home, he finds his family murdered, he goes to Rome, and he kills the prince. End of movie. Any conflict? There's no, but if he's taken prisoner and his whole life is upset, that's a much and slave, and he has to fight for his life every time he goes into the arena. So will he be alive to revenge his family? This is conflict. Okay. The, every story needs this. Okay, particularly in screenplays. Now the conflict may be. Inside, and it may be outside. So, an inside conflict could be: uh, I, uh, if I want to, do, I want to become a, a pilot, but I don't know how to fly. Right. So, I, the conflict is, I have to go learn, and I have to put in thousands of hours and spend a lot of money to learn how to fly. That is what we call an obstacle. This is conflict and obstacle are pretty much the same thing. Obstacle means something in your way. You know these orange things in the street that are so high? You can't, the car won't go? This is obstacle. Okay, anything that blocks where you want to go. Okay? So obstacle conflict, okay? That's, it could be inside. Outside, it could be another person. Okay? Someone else wants what I want. Uh, two men in love with the same woman. The two men are obstacles, are in conflict with each other. That's a better love story than two people just hating. Or two people fall in love and their families don't like each other. This is conflict. Okay? It's called Romeo and Juliet. And William Shakespeare wrote it a long time ago. Got it? No family hate, no story. If they fall in love and they're happy, it's all good. It's called wedding and commercial. Right? Yes. Got it? So you must have conflict. What's in the way of what the main character wants? And here's the other thing. 
from soccer, goal, right? The character has a goal. It's something they want, something they need. They're after something. Okay? It could be to save their family. It could be to get rich. It could be to avoid the police. But they're trying to get something or several things or a few things during the course of the story. That's why I said there's something at the end. It's very like going down a dark tunnel. There's something at the end. Is it a monster? Is it a pot of gold? There's something there. Okay. So does this make sense? They have to want something or they need something. Um, did you see the movie Taken with Liam Neeson? Okay. In the film Taken, he his daughter, his daughter, he sends his daughter to Paris. She's, uh, she has to go to Paris. While they're there, they're kidnapped by um, that guy. Okay? And they're going to sell them to somebody. His daughter's been kidnapped. Okay? That's a problem. It's a very simple film. I want my daughter to ask me. Got it? That's the movie. What are the obstacles? Who took them? Where are they? Why? Why? Why he doesn't care as as much about it? I got to find it. Okay? I got to find it. So that is what a goal is. I have to find my job. Sometimes the goal can be um, intellectual. I need to find a spirituality. I need to find peace. Okay, it could be something very simple like this. But it drives the story. Everything is about this goal. Okay? I want to run across the desert. Well, what's in my way? Everything. Distance, the hot sun, I have to get food, water, sleep, snakes, huh? right? So every story has a character with a goal, and they have conflict, obstacles. Got it? Now I want to emphasize something. You may, you may put these down on the page automatically. So it doesn't matter if they come from your imagination, or you go back later and rewrite it and say, a character needs a stronger goal. Uh, so that's character. Time is when is the story happening? When is it happening? Yes. Is it happening now? Is it happening in the future? Did it happen two thousand years ago? Right. We we've all seen uh, biblical movies, right? Right? So that's time. Where is it happening? Are we in Chicago? Are we in Tibet? Or Vietnam? Or what? Vietnam. Or Vietnam? Okay. It could be out of the. Uh, it could be out of the. Space. It could be in space. So we're on a make-believe planet. War Tron said there's a whole population of Earth beings. It's a colony of people from every. The world, and it's a huge social, social experiment to see if they can all live together in peace. It's fiction, but look at how it relates to that. That's what science fiction does. It talks about now, but it uses the future. Okay? I've read one, two, maybe three lines. Again, you may know it at the very beginning, but by the time you finish your first short story, 
or your screen let go and what's in their way. And then we're going to get to this. And so to begin with, what is an interesting way to start a story? Uh, uh, if um, I go to the movies and the screen is there, I see a beautiful day. It's a cliff. And I'm there and I hear the birds chirping and the wind and suddenly a car comes careening off the cliff. And then we do freeze frame, stops. And then I hear then a voice says, I wonder, uh, I bet you're wondering how this happened to you. And then we go back. Okay? And we learn their story. So that's an intriguing beginning. Okay? Typically, movies start uh, in an interesting, grabbing way. Okay? The middle is where this conflict But there's a third option is uh, the open ending, which I hate the most. She loves. The third is, did they get something else? So remember way back when I said there was two men in love with the same woman? If one guy gets the woman, and the other guy realizes, ah, she's beautiful, but she's not right for me. But this wonderful woman over here, with glasses and a funny voice, is right for me. See what I'm saying? That's called the third thing. We also call that the gold. It's the special knowledge that you can get. You, the character may, at the end, discover that their quest was wrong. Okay? They may be seeking revenge, but at the moment of revenge, they can't kill that guy. Not in the, I can't kill. Yes. You, can the same in the two. you can, but you still need a pretty good story to get to a part two. Don't write for part two, write for one thing. And then we have the music and then uh, everything, there are something artistic and uh, there are something commercial. In the music? 
In every art, there is something artistic and something commercial, right? Yeah. How would uh, do you balance the two? No, no, no. Could it be on the good writer writing for commercial? Yes. For money, just writing for money. Yes. yes. So you can eat. Why is the Let's say it's time to do a silly movie that means I can sense the, the responsibility of thought. My answer to that is whatever you're working on, do your very best. It may not be the If somebody, a producer comes to a writer and says, I want you to write this. I want you, I need this kind of a movie. Okay, write me a monster movie. And they go, okay. You still, and you, and you want to do it or you have to do it. You still try and do your very best. You try and be artistic and clever and, and take it above where it, the, that kind of story might not normally go. Okay? There are a lot of people there that we call them the self has been. Somebody has to write television, I'm sorry. Somebody has to, to write it. The sitcoms and the melodramas and the cop shows. Somebody has to do it. Right? They can't all be art films. But, yeah. Yeah, it can be good. There need to be some city to see that. <laughs> you must see why that is not that. It's a. That which one? I, my, my thought is that we need to see something uh, like just to be that uh, to realize that uh, no one from is a great. That's good. And then that of well, it wasn't the movie. That right. They were both very popular in their day. Right. Yes. Is that I did. I gave you a few examples of starting at the end. Start at the end. Start at the end. There's many, many famous movies that start at the end. Okay? And then we go back. And that's why I'm saying storytelling is how do I get information to the audience? Uh, Iron Man does this. We get Tony in trouble, and then we go back, and then we come to the present time story where he gets the new chess thing, and then the story moves forward. Um, this is a film called Raging Bull. It starts at the end of someone's life, and we go back to the beginning. There's a film called Sunset Boulevard. A guy is dead in a swimming pool, and he says, I bet you're wondering how I got dead in a swimming pool. Well, let me tell you. That's the power of storytelling. That I can manipulate this crazy thing, and a dead man can talk. Okay. So it happens all the time. We can play with us. We can get into from that. We uh, what kind of a life? What kind of life? Make up. Some kind of life. Ministry. Ministry, yes, you can do that too. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, any questions about what we talked about up to this point? Okay, we have four topics to get into. Okay, um, for short stories and for uh, the story starts pretty quick, there isn't a lot of uh, stuff be before the plot. Uh, uh, clicks in. Okay. Our short stories can be 20 pages long. Okay. Writing a short story is a good way to prepare for a screen. Because all the elements are the same. They have characters, they want something. There are things in their way at the end of the story. There's accelerating conflict, and the end of the story resolves. Did they get it? Did they find it? Okay. Um, yes. uh, uh, and in a script form, every minute, uh, every page is, is 
averages at about 50 seconds. 50 seconds, almost a minute. So if I have uh, 100 pages, I have a 50 minutes. OK. So C incident outbreak. Okay. Now this stories and pictures. You'll notice inside movies where the dialogue stops. If somebody goes into someone's house and they're looking for something, okay, it tends to go silent and we're just watching them. Are they finding it? Who's in the house? Will they be discovered? Okay. That is telling the story in pictures. If I can show what a character is thinking or feeling by what they do, it's more interesting and I think more convincing than having them tell me about it or having someone else tell us that. It's more interesting to see it in behavior. Um, uh, Mastic Men. There's a film with Nicholas Cage called Mastic Men. He, he has a, a, a disease called OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder. So when he locks his door, he locks it three times. When he checks something, three times. So do you, do you need to have someone say, hey, uh, how's your OCD doing? <laughs> <laughs> do I need dialogue? And there's something private about watching a character in the world. Right? So I want to tell the audience something about the character. And I show up at work, at their place of work. How can I show something about the character? I'm writing a screenplay or a short story and I have a character and I want to start telling the audience about who they are and I'm starting I have a scene where they're at work how am I going to show the audience so I know that what I want to I'm writing a story, a short story, or I'm writing a script. They have a character, and there's scenes that work. And I don't want that anyone to tell us. I want to show the audience, show the audience who they are. So what can I do? Writing the dialogue between them, for example, no dialogue. No dialogue. Uh, maybe the name. The name so they have their name. When I say show who they are, I mean what kind of person they are. So what can I do? Maybe I want to show them how to Oh, this is good. So how do I show that? Maybe I can choose when there's no one in the office, but they're very, very concentrating, drinking coffee. See that? So they're at their desk, their papers are high, everyone else is going home, and they're, drinking, and they're still working. Okay? I didn't have to say a word. Okay? Isn't that great? Okay, what, how else can I show? That, that is a perfect example. Okay? If I come to them and their desk is organized, I say something about them. Alright? If I come to them and their desk, is messy and disorganized. Okay? If they're off in the corner and everyone else is talking and socializing, I say something about it. If the people are socializing and my character is in the middle telling the funniest story from the weekend, I'm saying something about it. Okay? Does that make sense? So I don't have to have people come up and say something bad. Okay. 
So that story is in pictures. Uh, details to enhance. There, that's part of the details. How the desk looks. How they, what they're wearing. Okay, how they're dressed. Okay, what kind of car they're in. Everything that's on screen is information. What kind of neighborhood do they live in? Do they say hello to the neighbors or do they not say hello to the neighbors? These are all details that relate to character. Okay. And as human beings, we relate to and understand all kinds of character. Okay. So the more specific you are, and the more detailed, the more interesting the character is. Okay? The opposite of this is the policeman. The policeman walks up to the lady and writes her a ticket. What policeman? What left? What tip? Okay? So, so that is the word. Now the other thing is also in word choice. So I never write, the man walked into the room. I'll say he burst into the room. I would say he crept into the room. See? I always want to give the audience something. Okay, it's much more interesting. Um, this We'll talk about this is very important. So scenario outline. So I'll give you uh, a little bit of a method. Then a way of doing something. So you have a story, right? Your your brain is this funny kind of an animal. And the story appears in your brain. It shows up. I didn't even know what I was thinking about So, I think what you want to do is get at your computer or write on a piece of paper everything that's in your head. If you have a scene idea, write that. If you have a description, you write that. If you think it ends this way, write that. Get as much out of your head and onto a screen or paper as possible. Don't try and organize in your head. Okay? It's too hard and you start analyzing. You must give them all the books. Yes, write everything. And you can go, I know this is silly, but I know he is kind of saying, write. His shoes are untied, write. Uh, I, I think he has an ex wife, write. But everything you know about the story, don't edit inside your head. And don't edit when you're writing. Get it out, get it out, get it out. Okay? Wait a while, and then come back. And then read it. And go, hmm. and you probably have new thoughts. Add the new thoughts. If you know what the story is, as you get better, you may know what the story is. But if you still don't know what the story is, you have to just keep writing. You know, I think there's a scene where this happens. I think there's a moment where this happens. It's really from your imagination. So get all those things on paper. And once there's enough, then you're going to start shaping it into an outline. You're going to get tired of writing notes and go, oh, OK. And then you're going to go, I think the story begins here. We meet him in his flat. Or we see him driving in rush hour traffic. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what I think. And to me, these are all temporary decisions. You know, they don't matter. They're just temporary. I think it begins here. And I think the next thing, the next thing. Then I don't know. And then I think he has dinner at his mother's, and then he goes on vacation, and then the script ends with something like this. And you just start filling it in. What this sequence of events, where it starts, 
and where it is. After you've dealt all this information in your head, okay? And one of the things that's going to happen is that you're going to land in a genre. A genre is a French word that means a type or a form. Of a genre. G E N R E. And we already talked to them about them. Comedy, drama, action, science fiction, horror. These are types of stories. Okay. And so the short stories that you're thinking of writing, they Okay. So that's going to start emerging. As you write your scenario, you're going to say, oh, this is a drama. Wow. Or it may become a comedy. Okay. So you're going to start doing this outline. Then you may put it aside in a separate document. You may take one document and lay it in. Separate document. Then you may go back to the notes. As you're doing this, you're thinking, you're thinking about, I'm going to go up to here, other characters. How can I show my character? I need other characters around me. So this thing up here, characters, it's in a screenplay in particular, we want only characters that serve the story. Okay, so what does that mean? Yeah. When they ask you or they appear to the screen that will be appear, that has a character that will be for the things that I want to show the person. Right. Yeah. And then also the speech and the behavior. That's exactly right. I want characters that are, are helping the story that I'm telling. I don't want any extraneous characters. I don't extraneous means characters that do something uh, that's not important. Okay. Okay. Questions about that? Translations. How many people have seen that here? Me, I have Great. Who's the central character? Right. And why is he the central character? Why is it Yes. So she defined it. The story was about him. Okay? His honor in battle, him uh, uh, being selected to be the new king, his wife, his family gets slaughtered, he is taken to into slavery. Nobody else has as much things happening. As he does. Right? And that's what's important for the central character. A lot of stuff has to happen to him. Okay? Um, so, for your stories and your characters, many things need to happen. Yeah. You can't just hang out. Something has to happen while they're hanging out. I saw that girl you used to date. Oh, really? How is she? She looks great. Okay. So even if it's a casual scene, something is happening. So you're going to keep writing your notes, and you're going to come to your outline, keep shaping it out, shaping it. And once you have your outline in the form, you say, this looks like a story with the beginning, 
middle and end. And if you're writing a script, then you're going to change it into screenwriting form. Okay. But the outline of this is very important. When you read it to a certain extent, that is your the best thing you can do. That's a great tool you have. If you just start writing the screenplay, that's very difficult. We, um, at the speaker, we work with students all the time, and writing is the hardest part. Shooting a film is not hard. Directing is not that hard. Editing is not that hard, unless the story is So a lot of what we do is fixing stories in editing. Okay? We're rewriting and editing. And that's why this topic came up, because writing, writing and editing are, are very, very similar. Because when I'm editing, I can change the order of the You like to write with pictures and write with sound? I can change the order of the scenes. I can take scenes away. Yes. Mm -hmm. Last year we was participating that uh, <laughs> that good we won the the challenge was a humanity. It's a forty eight and uh part of the time was for me. Yes. What the quarter of the time we can move in seven minutes of course I didn't move it because we was limited in time. Yeah. Uh, for my opinion that uh, it really should be a third, a third, and a third. See, I would write these. I would write these ahead of time. Oh. Okay, yes. We have about uh, 10 minutes left. I That's a huge question, actually. It depends why you really stopped. Sometimes we have a great idea, and it doesn't come fast enough, and we get bored with it. Sometimes we have a great idea, but we really don't know what it's about. We have a character, we have some situations, and some family members, but we don't know what it's about. I'll give you this word, theme. Theme. Theme is the central idea. Yeah. So in Gladiator, one theme is revenge. Okay. Another theme is honor and integrity. Okay. Maximus is a real he has great integrity. He should be full of rage and want to do terrible things to other people. And that's a soldier's mind. Okay? So, if you discover what or your short person, that can be a huge eye opening. 
experience. Okay? You think it's about this, but it could be about something. Okay? Um, so that's one helpful thing. Okay? So it could be about bravery. It could be about finding love. It could be about finding your personal identity. Any number of things, right? Okay, then. What is your story about? I have about like twenty words, like someone just left from from life, and he and he and he is like sick of the routine of the day. So when he watched about the twenty words, he started he he started thinking why why not to try this. Um, these things. So he left the work for a month and started to things as uh, a volunteer work. And he asked me that he did some testing. I thought that uh, the next uh, after he watched the, the program about the volunteer work, I didn't find the scenes or more details to quote after the so are you guys hearing this? Every story goes through this. So he's in a regular job. He, did, he gets bored with his regular job. He sees some kind of a program about volunteerism, right? And he goes and he does this work, and he becomes more fulfilled, right? So what is his goal? And goal also is problem. It's the same thing. What's my problem? Matthew's problem is somebody killed his family. He's going to fix his problem through revenge. You with me? What's your character's problem? My character's problem is he wants to be happy. Uh, he is sick of everything. Like his, I, I bring this just from his work. He is. He, he, Right. Right. So, what's what do you think the theme? What's the central idea of this? Is it a film or a short story? It's a film. Okay. What's the central theme? It's and Okay, it seems to be kind of big, uh, broad things. Okay? So I would say the theme is personal fulfillment. You guys know this term? Personal fulfillment. I feel satisfied. Do you know who Mother Teresa is? She had deep personal fulfillment. She was doing the work she felt she was put on earth to do by God. It doesn't get any more fulfillment than that. Okay? So this character wants fulfillment. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint a world where he's unfulfilled. Ever, every place that I think of, he feels unfulfilled. And then he doesn't know what to do. Maybe, because remember, stories about characters making things worse for them. Does he get fired? No, he just. Uh, but he oh, could. Wouldn't that be worse? He is just bored. Yes. Okay, well, so listen. Is it better for the story if he quits or if he gets fired? Fired, fired. Yeah. So, see how this more interesting? So, okay. So, he's so bored at work, he falls asleep. No, he's become very good. As I know, he starts to fidget. To like every day, maybe he is. Oh, okay. Well, he's being angry. So I have 
a little bit of accelerating uh, events where he does this something this big, then something this big, then something that big. So, and what is he quick? What, what's happening at work that makes a snap? What is it? Okay, so th these are the questions. These are the questions. I would like to capture him as he has the discussion in the and the group So, okay, guys, just we I only need your attention for a few more minutes. This is so she's got an idea. There's a character. He's bored in his work. Can anybody relate to that? Everyone. And he wants to do something for fulfillment. And he ends up doing something really good. He thinks it's for him, but he ends up doing it for other people who need more. That's a very nice story. Okay? So self-fulfillment may be through helping others. Okay? So, how can I amplify this story? She said, he's got a great job. What the heck is he complaining about? I may surround him with friends. Yes, yes. I may surround him with friends who say, I would kill him to have your job. See the contrast now? You have this benefit and this money and this, and your secretary is attractive and your boss is hardly there. You have a great job. See how I'm amplifying? So his friends are jealous. I'll take your job. So I want to paint the world around him to amplify the story. His mother said, please don't, please don't leave this job. You know, how do you marry a nice woman? He said, that may not be his call. Are you seeing? We make it more. Does it make sense? Yes. Are you feeling what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So his friends are saying, you, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Okay. He buys everybody drinks. They have crappy jobs. If you lose that, how are you going to drink at night? You suck. Okay? See how it's more interesting now? If you don't write, don't write this. You know, how am I going to amp you know what amplification is? La la la, get louder. That's amplification. So how do I make his situation bigger? By what am I surrounding? How can I make it worse? He's engaged to be married. And he tells his fiance, uh, I'm unhappy with my job. So we're getting married, we need money, we need to be practical. See how it's more important now? Yeah. Make the lives of your characters worse before they can get better. Okay? So we take a simple idea and we grow in bigger. We use the characters, the limited characters around them. Okay? I have to do the first half of the story, the 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 Oh, it's the darkness, sorry. It goes like this. Here's the beginning, and then it has this, and then it does that. Oh, wait a minute, it goes that. Where's the mystery? Let me explain this. This is the beginning. It's normal life, and then something happens. Okay? He first gets fired, he wants to do something, and what's in his way, and then he gets first force, and this is a big battle. His parents hate him, his fiancée doesn't want to talk to him, his friends won't return his call, he has no social life, no job. He had, he had something before, even though he didn't like it. This is called the low point. He has nothing now. Then something happens. 
some sense, somehow this thought of volunteerism comes into his life. What Yushua is missing is the middle. Like a bored guy, and he finds a solution. Well, how did he get there? And did he find the right kind of... I always look at something, and I think of all the options around it. So did he find the right kind of volunteers? You know, he may, he may think he has to uh, quit and go write poetry. Who knows? You see, he went right to the solution that's not much of a story. Right? What's in the middle? Okay. And we, we, can, we can condense things in the story. Condenses to make smaller. If this is a loaf of bread, and it went like this, that's to condense. So we see, you know what montage is? Okay, this is condensing things. So um, you can see relationship montage. People meet, they go on a date, and eventually they get married. But it happens for two minutes. That's montage. That's compressing time. Okay. So are you understanding that this is the guy who is unfulfilled, and here he is fulfilled? Well, the story is fulfilled. Okay? So who is he? I want to know who he is. Is he middle class? Is he, is he, is he gifted? Yes. Okay. And then he has trouble. He has trouble finding himself. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to help that we stop the broadcasting.